to be as quiet as possible so I don't spoil the silence. In the background you can't see the water but there's Fuston Reservoir in Yorkshire. Apologise for blinding you. I thought I'd come local this morning. I have plans to go to the seaside. I have plans to go to Wales. I have plans to go to um, the Lake District. But I thought I'd stay local. This is about 40 minutes away from home. I have my camera set up doing that time lapse. The, the sky itself is quite clear. And I keep thinking I've seen the Milky Way in the sky, but it's just a bank of clouds that looks like the Milky Way. Time lapse 250 20 second photographs. I've got ISO at 400, so I'm hoping I can manage to collect some decent light for a decent light satchel. The sun is due to arrive behind the camera. And I'm hoping it's going to illuminate all the other side of the reservoir. Change it to the other side. Oh, the other side of the reservoir. Along where you will be able to see, if you could see it, along the other side. It's getting colder and colder, the lighter it gets. There's going to be no reflections because there's a slight breeze. And as I said before, all it takes is a slight breeze and you lose it. Plus there's about 300 birds keep landing. So that's the there's the camera. You won't be able to see it. 20 second exposure. So any minute now it should pop up. Good thing about Amubidus is that looks overexposed. That looks overexposed. Again, I'll continue to shoot it. Um, I've got my frittle ring on in preparedness for sunrise. There isn't much cloud coverage, but there's a little bit of cloud on the horizon in front of the camera that I'm hoping remains. Yeah, that looks overexposed, but I'm not going to change it. It's set up. I'll sign off for there. Good morning. I'm still at Houston Reservoir, and I have to say it's absolutely gorgeous but very cold indeed. I'm not sure how much of the earlier video I'll be showing because it was very dark and I couldn't really focus and see what I was photographing or videoing. There's some absolutely wonderful clouds behind the camera and they behind the camera shader. You can just see it through there and I'm hoping as the sun rises that colour is going to move across the sky as it is there and illuminate the sky and the clouds that are on the opposite side of the reservoir. It's bitterly cold, hence I have to keep changing. Oh, oh that's not working. Oh, it's absolutely freezing. I was in Glencoe last year, I believe, and it's colder than it was then. Oh, bitter, it must be minus two. So, there we have Houston Reservoir. I came here when I first got my camera about eight years ago, just to the car park yonder and did a few panoramas. Didn't realise I'd been here before until I arrived. I do apologise, my fingers are freezing. I have some absolutely wonderful frost over there and some lovely silver birch, which I may photograph. There's about 397 million birds on the reservoir and there's a very slight breeze which I'm working with. Appears to be some colour coming, which will be good. I've managed to find a little bit of foreground interest just there. Not the most interesting foreground interest. I've done a full panorama, probably 200 degrees from there, I should be taking pictures from there, right around there. It may or may not work, it's probably going to be a bit thin with a full panorama and also there's not a lot in the mid-ground. But I did manage to catch them foreground rocks in. The panorama 
I think it's going to happen. I think it's going to happen. It's very strange when you arrive in the dark. I read about half past five, pitch black. And as you get your night vision and as it gets lighter, you see things you didn't see before. Yep, yeah, so I'm going to be taking photographs around where I went, around, around that area. I think that line, I think the clouds are going to illuminate over there. I've got a decent bit of foreground interest. I've got quite low down to remove much of the mid-ground water, which lacks any real interest, unless you like birds. I've got the point nine hard grad, and I've got the point nine soft grad, which I'll probably chop and change as I go along. I've not put the polarizer on because when I took it out of the bag, it froze. The actual lens froze, and I've had to clean these several times. Yep, I'm going to take some photographs now and I'll be back soon. See ya. Morning again. So there you have the silver birch I mentioned earlier on. That was a very enjoyable morning. Now I've talked about convergence before obviously not a word I invented but the context in which I talk about it is frequent occasions where you arrive on location you get your composition correct you get your weather correct you get the atmosphere correct and you get yourself in the correct frame of mind now I didn't get that this morning and you don't always have to have convergence to have a good time and to get a good photograph. One thing that was missing this morning were the clouds. Yes, I'm going to mention it again. The clouds on the horizon where I was photographing are bloody awful. Apart from one fluffy cloud. But the clouds behind the camera where I'm looking, and I won't show you, are absolutely gorgeous. You've got a variety of clouds. You've got fast moving clouds, you've got fluffy clouds, you've got bright clouds, and you've got deep greys. But you do have to work with what you have, and I can just see the light hitting the horizon there and touching the very tips of the trees. Not an easy place to photograph. It's very wide, very expansive areas of water. Some nice intimate foreground rocks just poking through the surface of the water and a larger one in the middle there. Quite a few things have gone wrong this morning, mainly due to the weather. When I arrived it was about two degrees and it dropped very fast to I'd say minus two, minus three Everything started freezing. My fingers froze, so I dropped my filters. My gimbal froze, my tripod froze, my, my head, um, the tripod head froze. So it's very difficult to manoeuvre it round. So I'm just going to mooch around here for a bit longer. See what, see what we get. Nice and quiet, very few people around, which is good. One person walked past me. Of the road behind the camera, and I've got my uh, my hula hoop, my light painting the hula hoop. Had a few goes of them, but I'm quite out of practice, so whether they work or not, I don't know. I'll probably pop one on just to show you what the effect, just to show you what effect it gives. And I felt such a burke walking around with a hula hoop in my hand. Some very light mist on the water, slight ripples. So I'll probably hang around here for a bit longer. I'm scenting some square crops of the trees over there. There's a lovely cluster of silver birch, but there's a bloody great pipe in front of it and a couple of small bushes, so that will interfere with the composition. Unless I can get further on there, and there's a lone tree on the bank there, so I might have to go up that. Yeah, an enjoyable morning. Getting out and about with your camera is lovely. I know I've already said 
in the recent vlog that I had no trips planned and I haven't. This was just an ad hoc trip. I've booked two further weekends in January and February. Road trip, I think. Camping road trip. So I'm going to head over there to see what, what's occurring. I'll catch up with you soon. See ya.